Hello YouTube, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2. This is gonna be another game, best of seven, between another two nations. It's actually going to be Canada versus France in this one. So let's introduce our players very, very quickly. Huck is gonna be on the top right hand side here of Runes of Ceres. He's gonna be representing both Evil Geniuses and Canada. Now his opponent is gonna be MD Stefano, otherwise known as Stefano, representing both Meltdown and France. So this is the first game of best of seven. Currently as you can see scores are zero apiece and let's see how both of our players are gonna begin off here. So let's have a quick look. Oh by the way before we begin also our my question of the series is gonna be would you be watching streams if I was to start streaming? Would you do um, would you basically watch them on Twitch? Because I, I honestly, I don't know if it's worth even setting this up. I spent about an hour or two trying to figure out the settings and all that. And it seems that the Twitch is the stream is actually no longer lagging, so that's a great sign, of course. And um, yeah, of course, if you have any suggestions as well, let me know. Now, funny enough, this is actually being streamed at the moment, so I do apologize if I get distracted every now and then, just because I'm basically checking up on what's going on with that. And uh, one thing I will say is that whenever I stream, I'm currently not setting up any donations because I don't know if I'm going to be committing to it. And um, whenever I stream, I'll basically I'll be responding to any questions you have while on the stream, but I will not be doing it while I'm casting. So it'll be in between casts. So whenever this game, for example, finishes, I will be doing, uh, you know, just reading through the questions, seeing what people have said and responding to those. So it looks like we have a double expansion here coming out from Stefano. Quite standard from this, from a Zerg player on this map, simply because, of course, we have the huge rush distances, so it's very difficult to actually predict where your where your opponent is. Now, as you can see, this Overlord has gone in the incorrect direction. So has this one, and it looks like he might actually scout out the correct position very, very last. So, of course, any sort of rush ability for Stefano would have been defeated here. Of course, he didn't actually opt to go for a rush. So let's see how he starts off here. Looks like we have the Nexus up here already. Gonna start to saturate that very, very quickly. We have a cybernetic score after two gateways. And two gases as well. Now the question is going to be, is there gonna be some early tech going down here? Or is he going to just basically continue on with the basic structure of a few gateways, the Twilight Council, which just went down and uh, basically pile on a few more gateways and a robotics facility. Generally, two early gases do, do mean either um, a Stargate or maybe an early robotics. But let's see, of course, how this one plays out. Looks like we have two Adepts on, coming out for him. Does have a probe here. I assume this is basically to see if there's going to be any sort of Overlord passing by. Although at the same time, probably the worst possible position. Now at the start he had a probe running around here. In case you didn't notice, I didn't actually bring the camera to it, but I did spot it. Now this is very peculiar here, not quite sure what the purpose of that probe is. Maybe he's going to throw down something there. For example, uh, a Stargate. <laughs> Looks like he's blocking off his entrance here, which is quite standard. This, this is actually two gateways, so that is pretty much perfect for him. And let's see what he's going to do with these. So it looks like Stefano's army is a little bit ahead. And just to note that the reason for that is, is he threw down a bunch of Zerglings at the beginning and now as you can see he is droning pretty damn hard. He's got a bunch of drones being produced for his third expansion or his third base rather. And I don't think that these Zerglings are there to do a significant amount of damage. He knows that at this point Hawk is going to have a bunch of defenses. He's going to have a second base set up and ready to basically be defended from any sort of Zergling aggression. So he's essentially here just to basically put on some pressure just to show his presence on the map he of course doesn't want to give away any sort of you know free expansions and all this kind of stuff to Huck he wants him to be under pressure all the time and uh, yeah just just showing a bit of presence with Zerglings they're not gonna do a huge amount of damage so as you can see here there is actually a gateway here being produced it's a bit of a sneaky one because of course it does hide any of his units and as you can see has not been spotted by Stefano but these are going to be cleaned up if you get surrounded by Zerglings. There's very little chance of escaping with 
the adepts i mean they, they do have the psionic transfer ability but at the same time that needs to be put up a lot in advance of the of the actual surround so a bunch of adepts being warped in here more and more notice that he does have a dark dark shrine as well and two more gases on the way so hawk deciding to do a bit of shenanigans here basically a proxy which actually funny enough is about to get spotted right now and he does have a bunch of adepts here now these adepts could wipe out a lot of drones so let's see what he's going to do here does decide to go into the main base instead of taking out that queen could have actually sniped it off quite easily there we go does attack this one as well manages to snipe off one queen so far a few drones going down there's a aggression going down from both bases right now actually all three bases it looks like seven drones in total have been taken out is it worth the the amount of adepts that he lost probably not yet but let's see what these ones do that's of course the main army of the adepts a few adepts being transferred in so he basically split them up here just to do that extra bit of uh, annoyance to the roaches because of course they will be having a difficult time to catch up to them so 16 drones so far taken out very very well played here by hawk i have to say doing exactly what he needs to do to prevent the the zerg e economy from going out of control so more and more adepts being streamed in here as you can see he's warping in more constantly and this is absolutely beautiful right now 22 drones a lot of players would have gg'd out at this point stefano holding on and managing to defend off against that he does have a superior army so that is at least one thing in his favor so of course he is not out of this game at all yet even though he did lose oh there we go the dark templars are now in position there is going to be an overseer being warped in here but this i do believe this expansion it is a bit too late for it oh there's just a little bit of damage left and they do manage to snipe it off there we go and then immediately getting taken out by all of those roaches what is this this is an evolution chamber being produced here probably just for a few upgrades more and more drones getting taken out left and right i have to say stefano or stefano is in so much trouble right now as you can see hawk in such a good position taking out so many drones at this point and now even though the Zerg player has three bases, 45 to 36 workers in favor of Hawk. So, so much economic harassment going down here and beautiful play here from our Protoss player. Let's have a look at the units lost. 28 drones. As I said, a lot of players at this point would have probably given up. There would be very little that they would be able to do about this. So, very well played here. And very good for Hawk to continue on with this. Using say on a transfer again. Going to bring these into the third base. Let's see what he's going to do. There is a counterattack here. Or maybe not. It's actually just a few Zerglings. It does appear that he's taking out more and more drones. And he is focusing them down. He's not just attack moving them. Because they would of course focus onto the roaches. Since those are attacking units. Oh this spine crawler is getting very very quickly killed off here. I do think that that's going to make it. Finally, this pylon getting taken out here. No more close warp ins at this point. And this is going to put Huck's aggression to a standstill for just a bit. How much has been lost? 36 drones. That is absolutely huge to lose so early on in the game. We were 8 minutes in. 36 drones. That is quite significant. Think about it. He he's, he pretty much started off early with three two expansions, bringing him up to three bases. Yeah, you expect to have a huge amount of units up at this time, a huge amount of workers. But because of this harassment, Huck has standardized the game so, so well. The only disadvantage that I have to say that Huck has at the moment is his army supply. Before he gets this base, he's going to be at a very big disadvantage because he only has... Uh, two working bases and he needs to saturate this one before actually building up attacking units here so i think that his best option right now is to just simply throw in everything that he got into his expansion to just basically get out as many units uh, as possible or rather get, throw in as many unit resources into production of units Let's see how that plays out. We do have one pylon here being remade and the dro uh, the probe is still over here waiting to possibly do something. 
It's probably just there in case the pylon gets destroyed again. More warp ins. Is he gonna do more harassment? I don't know. Looks like the Zergling and Roaches are gonna go around here. Now there's not a whole lot here for Huck to defend off against this aggression. All of his army is actually down the south. So we could potentially see a base trade situation here. Overcharges going down. Two overcharges have already been used up. There's a lot of energy on this Mothership core. So definitely gonna be able to do a whole lot of over overcharges here. As you can see, these, these Dark Templars not gonna be able to do a whole lot here. There's already an Overseer in position. But this base, definitely going to get taken out here. A few roaches in the making as well. But these units are just not caring about it right now. They're just going straight in there, doing as much damage as they can. Taking out one base. Looks like this next is also getting denied here. And Stefano decides to back on out, out of here. Now, honestly, I don't know if that is the best, best idea for him. I mean, he does have the superior army right now. So... I think that it would have been better to just continue on with the base trade and just basically just run straight in and do as much damage as he can. Okay, so a lot of drones again getting taken out here. 20 drones have been taken out at this point. I do believe he's probably approaching about seven, seven, 60 or 70 drones in total taken out. And a nice round here from Stefano finally managing to clean this army up. A few immortals being lost here as well. So of course, the economic loss for Huck is quite significant in this one. So looking at the army supply, look at that, 17 to 52. Huck had so, so much damage done to the economy of Stefano but the question is gonna be is Stefano gonna rush in with these units and do basically a counter-attack and finish off Huck. Huck of course threw a lot of resources into that attack he lost pretty much everything out of it so if he's able to come back around here maybe even he, if he manages to deny this amount of units so just a bunch of drones and one nexus he could very well take this game despite the fact that he's started off so poorly here so let's see how is this going to progress. It's a very tense moment I think for both of our players right now because Huck, Huck has to get as many units up as possible. Stefano has to recover his economy and then he needs to basically keep on the aggression here to not let Huck get out of control altogether. Looks like we do have level 2 carapace and level 2 melee weapons for Zer coming out. So possibly going to switch into Ultralisk slash uh, Ultraling build which is I, I believe what it's called and apologies for the the uh, rustiness I am still a bit recovering from the throat infection that I had for about a week and a half so I couldn't cast and I am of course forgetting my words right now let's have a look at the upgrades tab looks like we have blink and we have level one carapace and yeah so they're actually being completed as well as you can see there was the uh, the uh, pathogen gland research made for those infestors so as you can see we do have infestors on the way also now infestors of course very very useful for taking out gr groups of units they can mind control which i don't think is going to be what's being used here oh oh wow six more infestors being created right now so he's obviously interested in a huge infestor army there's a bunch of stalkers on the way also and these roaches i think that they could probably take this on i mean there is what about what is that again that is about 12 plus 4 16 and that is only against about nine stalkers i think that those roaches would be enough but then again there is more reinforcements coming in so that could be quite significant here there was a bit of harassment going down here again i do believe that was a depth but they did get taken out actually never mind that's uh these dark templars getting taken out very very quickly here in festus of course coming into play as well and let's see, is this base going to get denied again? Huck, again with the aggression onto the third base, is focusing it down a little bit. The army supply is so heavily favoring Stefano. Beautiful force fields going down. A few uh, fungal growths as well, just preventing units from getting away from the units that are, of course, sn snuck in through already. I think he really needs some Ravagers right now. He does not have anything to break these force fields. And this is quite huge. He's taking out all of Stefano's units one by one. I don't think this is what Stefano wants to be doing right now. All of his infestors are also in the front there. Definitely bring him back a little bit. So many drones have been taken out. Let's bring that up quickly. 73 in total have been lost. This is absolutely huge. I do believe that the army supply is starting to favor Hawk here as well. A little bit. The, the infestors are not able to do a huge amount once they're out of energy. And how is this going to play out? He's trying to snipe out that immortal and manages to get it down. 
And at this point, I do believe he's actually able to hold on to this. I think that he's actually okay here. This is insane. Stefano is down in both army supply and workers. And the reason I'm saying army supply, despite the fact that his actual army is bigger, is because those infest infestors have no energy, which essentially makes them quite useless other than being very, very squishy meat shields. They have 90 health. So let's see how this is going to progress. I do believe that... Stefano is actually in quite an okay position. I mean, if he can expand out of this, which is exactly what he's doing, and if he can drone up after that, he will definitely be able to, to get back into this game, and who knows, potentially even still win it. Now, a bunch of infested Terran being thrown down, a little bit of wasted though, because of course the stalkers backed off at this point. And let's see how this works out here. Okay, let's see. So a bit of damage going down here, not a huge lot. There's a bunch of uh, changelings here as well, just about to time out as well, not being very useful. This base is starting to saturate now, as you can see drones are being produced. Does look like level 2 weapons is also on the way for the Protoss player. So he is of course thinking of expanding now, or uh, basically teching up. So I think that at this point he probably wants to get armor upgrades as well. He definitely needs to upgrade his units as much as possible. I mean if you think about it, one extra damage on every unit will essentially give you, if you have as much as about 10 stalkers, that's already like having an additional stalker every time that they attack. So every upgrade that they get onto their units is already worth it so more and more drones taken out this has got to be one of the highest drone kill games that i have seen in starcraft 2 so far so so many have been killed let's bring that up again 92 drones holy jesus that is a lot and more and more being taken out again very very good focus here at this point 97 this is absolutely insane. Let's have a look at the units that does look like we have two Dark Templars somewhere on the map. There they are, just flying around, being a little bit annoying. And let's see where this progresses off to. Okay, so it does look like we've got a Twilight Council, not Twilight Council. Templar Archives. <laughs> Wrong building, whoops. And uh, that's essentially gonna bring up a bunch of Archons. That's definitely interesting. We do also have a Hive on the way. That is huge. That means that he is very, very likely to start off with either Broodlords or Ultralisks. I'm kind of thinking it's gonna be Ultralisks because he does have 2-2 under armor and melee weapons already. And of course the fact that he doesn't actually have a Spire. So probably going to be Ultras coming out here. Oh, Infested Terrans going down here. Kind of wasting them at the same time. They're not even going to hatch by the time they get destroyed. And there we go. Force Fields going down. Fungal Growth's also going down. Hitting a lot of those Adepts right in the face. Beautiful play here. Oh, the feedback going down as well. Taking out a few of those units. Archon being morphed in here as well. I do believe these Infestors are absolutely toast right now. These Adepts are going to catch up to them. And very, very easily clean them up here. Just waddling on away. Waddle, 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 waddle. Moving on down here, and let's see what's going on here. Does it look like we have got a surround here on these adepts? Gonna have to bring them on away here. I believe he's passed out about 100. Oh, he hasn't. So not 100 drones killed yet, but I do believe once this army engages on, that will exactly happen. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. Drones starting to get cleaned up here. Very good focus here as well. 16 drones in total. This base also getting shot down quite heavily. I think this could be the end of Stefano for this series. He is not in a very good position right now. 16 workers to 47. His army supply is also about a third of Huck. And Huck, I have to commend him. Such beautiful game style here. Just consistent harassment all the time. Pretty much destroying so, so many drones. And there we go, taking out Stefano at the very first game here. Huck progressing on to game number two. And that's pretty much it for game number one between France and Canada. I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I will see you guys in game number two. Our question of the series, by the way, I forgot to mention, I think is, would you watch these videos on stream? Would you be interested in uh, basically 
going on Twitch and viewing myself casting live, of course, interacting with the audience as well. Leave your comments below, and uh, I'll see you guys in game number two.